Leader Harry Reid will be meeting yet again at 4 Eastern time this afternoon. And joining me now to talk more about this is Republican Congressman Tim Hulskamp. He serves on the Budget Committee. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you. Let me get your reaction to the president saying that there is a number. It has been agreed upon, $33 billion, but now you've got the game of politics weaving in. Well, there's been a lot of politics going on. Uh, a budget was due in September long before myself and many other freshmen arrived here. Uh, I'm anxious to get it done, but we've got to make significant progress in putting a down payment on reducing this debt. Is $33 billion not significant progress, especially if that's the original number and it's, there's been an agreement surrounding that number? You have Speaker Boehner now saying he won't be put in a box, that he wants more cuts, but, but what is the number? Well, the number is actually 61, and uh, that's where we start on the House side. We're still waiting the Senate to actually pass a bill and actually get a number that goes through the floor, allows people to amend the process on the Senate side. So I don't know about 33 or 61, but when you look at a $1.5 trillion deficit, most of my constituents say 61 is a barely a start what we need to do. Well, speaking of your constituents, I read an article. You held a town hall meeting, and like so many others, uh, folks in your area want to see cuts, but they don't want to see cuts that affect them. Oh, actually, they do. Most of them say, hey, we're willing to do our share. Just make sure it's across the board that everybody participates in that. They recognize that with a $1.5 trillion deficit, we can't keep putting this off to the future, which is why we unveiled a new House budget today that would tackle the problems that are going to cripple us unless we solve our debt problem. But at your uh, town hall meeting that you held last month, there was one person who got up and expressed concerns, for example, on cuts to Head Start. There was another senior who got up and spoke to you regarding cuts uh, for senior citizens at a community center there so I don't I don't know if it's most or not or if it is all but certainly some of those concerns exist and you heard firsthand from people who were concerned that these cuts were affecting the poor and the elderly well, what's going to affect the poor and elderly the most is the fact this economy is not creating jobs. We've got to get the economy moving again. The best welfare program is a job. And that's what our new budget tries to do is hold back the line on taxes and turn entrepreneurs loose in America. And I've conducted 36 town halls. And across the board, folks recognize Washington keeps ignoring their deficit spending, ignoring the debt crisis. And that's what we're trying to solve here. That's why I came here as a freshman to tackle those problems both parties really have right. ignored for decades. Well, you, as you make a great point, obviously. People want jobs. They, they would like to see this economy back on its feet. With that said, the president brought and many others have brought up the issue that there seems to be a recovery. Things are moving along. The unemployment rate has dropped slightly. More people are heading back to work, over 200,000 in the last month. If you shut down the government, doesn't that set back the flow that we've been seeing, the progress that we've seen? Is that something that needs to happen now? Well, I think there are certain agencies, if they would back off of overregulation, that would be a positive sign for the economy. But I, I do have a real fear that uh, because the Senate has yet to produce a budget and because the president finally came to the table after, since September, this was due in September, that perhaps they might want to shut the government down. Republicans, I don't want to shut it down. What we want to do is cut spending and grow the economy because we have huge problems to tackle out in the future with all these deficits that are yeah, growing but, but everyone bigger everyone is saying they don't want to shut the government down. But it seems as if the compromise is a long way away. I mean, let's equate it to football. It's like a Hail Mary some days when I listen to people from both sides. You don't want to shut down, but how are you going to get a deal done? Well, that, that remains to be seen, and I, I really think it's a misnomer to talk about a shutdown because essential government functions will continue. It's essentially a slowdown, what it is, and it's happened many, many times in the past, and focus up here is all about slowdown when we have a $1.5 or $1.6 trillion deficit. Most constituents I talk to say, hey, you, you mean you can't get them to agree to one half of 1% yeah. of a cut well, or even less of well, that? It's so interesting that you call it a slowdown, Congressman Mike Pence. He says shut it down. If we can't shut it down. I'm hearing a lot of Republicans use the opposite term than what you're saying is a slowdown. They're saying, and, and members of the Tea Party, shut it down. Well, many functions will continue, and that's what's always been misrepresented, I think, oftentimes by both sides. I think oftentimes if Washington was shut down for a day or two, people wouldn't notice out in the real world. But the <laughs> point being, to get this economy going, we've got to roll back regulations, we've got to roll back Obamacare, we've got to roll back the president's proposed tax increases, and get the economy rolling again, because the best job, or the best welfare, right. is a new job. Well
need when new you jobs and others in America. use language like roll back Obamacare, it I think feeds into what the president says that, that this is about ideology. This is about targeting certain things to uh, give uh, power to your base or even to the more conservative. And I think it does feed into that that part of that storyline. With that said, I greatly appreciate you sticking around. There's a lot happening, and we hope to talk to you very soon as this ball moves forward. Hopefully, well, thank you. Well, there's a lot of things going on, and, and we're happy here to participate and hopefully changing the way Washington works. So thank, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, absolutely.